Hi, Pearls. I know what you're thinking. Where the f*** have you been? Or, you don't care. <laughs> but I decided I would come on and talk to you guys for a little bit. Let you know what's been going on with me. Let me turn. Well, I'm in Hawaii right now. I'm my view from my balcony. I should probably turn all the way around so you can actually see my face in the sunlight. But... Yeah, I've been gone a little while. I think my last video was like October 22nd. And I have to take a little break because I am gonna have a baby. That's right, I'm pregnant. And I was preparing to be pregnant. Um, my baby is actually uh, an IVF baby and she was transferred into me on November 7th. So, you know, I was prepping for all of that, um, getting ready mentally because that, which I'll get into more detail in another video, but that was a very long journey for me. And you definitely have to prepare mentally for what might or might not happen. So that's what I was doing in the meantime. But the transfer did end up working and I'm now pregnant with our little girl. I'm 16 weeks now. Um, and the first trimester was kind of hard. <laughs> I was pretty much out of commission. I had 24 hour morning sickness, I was deathly tired, and among other things, every symptom, I pretty much had it. I didn't vomit as much, it was just straight up nausea. I maybe vomited three times the whole first trimester, but the nausea was like relentless. It, it never let up from morning to night. I felt like I was going to puke at any moment. Um, also, I couldn't smell anything. I could barely eat anything. Nothing was good to me, which is a tough thing to deal with, especially when you're vegan. <laughs> uh, everything I loved, I now hated. Everything I loved the smell of, I now hated. Because I wasn't eating as much, I was weak on top of the already extreme fatigue I was already experiencing. Like, there was no way I was going to pick up a camera and make videos. If I keep looking, it's because of that. We we're situated right uh, at the dolphin exhibit, or the swim with dolphins. You see them? Let me stand up. So I'm situated right uh, above the Swim with Dolphins exhibit. I have my own thoughts about that. While I love looking at these dolphins, I do wish that they were out there in their natural habitat, but, you know, this is the kind of thing we do these days. We capture these beautiful creatures to entertain us but yeah back to what I was talking about when I first started this YouTube channel it was mainly to vlog for myself um, but then you guys started subscribing and you know it became something I wanted to share with you so <coughs> I didn't even have the energy to want to vlog for myself <laughs> during that whole ordeal even even my pregnancy for myself. Um, I've documented my whole IVF journey. Oh my god, these dolphins are so beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. I've documented my whole IVF journey and I'm a little sad right now because I had all of my videos stored on my external hard drive which is not working right now. So I have to get it sent off 
so that they can extract all of my information off, off of it. And I really hope they can because everything from my entire IVF journey is on there and I have planned to make a long video about it. Um, just sharing my experience, you know, in order to help anyone else who might be going through the same journey. I have, I still am planning, hopefully if I can get my footage off of that hard drive, to make that video about my IVF journey. But that is the bulk of the reason why I've been gone for so long. And I did actually vlog at some occasions. Um, on top of me being pregnant, it was really during a busy time for us. We were doing a lot of traveling. Um, we traveled to uh, Pennsylvania to do a speaking event. Uh, we were asked to speak at a, uh, a little convention. And I vlogged a lot of that, but I don't think I'm gonna release that vlog. I mean, because we, <coughs> we pretty much stayed in the resort the whole time and we didn't really venture out because it was freezing. That was in the beginning of December. So beginning of December in Pennsylvania, is cold <laughs> so we didn't really leave the only thing we left for was a uh, Christmas concert by a band called 1224 you can look them up on Instagram I might link them below um, because if you know when Christmas rolls back around you should definitely check out their tour dates and locations because it's such a cool show and a great friend of ours and business colleague Lenny Kaczynski is one of the lead guitarists in the band and they play the most cool versions, rock and roll versions of Christmas music, and we had a blast. Um, but we did speak at that event. My husband and I both spoke at the event, and along with uh, some other speakers in our company, or another couple in our company who is killing the game. We learned a lot from them, Antoine and Siobhan Landry and we're actually having them come speak for us at our next event in March but um yeah so we did that in the beginning of November I was I was about five weeks pregnant yeah because when you're IVF you know the baby's older when they transfer the embryo into you so I'm farther along than I have been pregnant if that makes sense but I was about six weeks pregnant during that time and that was around the time where my morning sickness like really started to kick in. Like I was I was losing my appetite. The smells weren't bothering me yet, but I was nauseous. So that was interesting to try to keep a smile on my face <laughs> when I wasn't feeling that well. And when we came back from the trip it really, really hit me with a vengeance. But, you know, I toughed it out. I mean, what can you do? It's it's totally worth the crap I went through. This is my fourth pregnancy, our first baby. We've lost a few, you know, and and that was tough. So to even get to the point where I felt the way I did, I call it a I call it bittersweet. <laughs> it sucked, but it was amazing at the same time because I knew that. Because I was so sick, she was thriving. So I'm like, yeah, just do whatever you gotta do. Make me sick, make me fat. Just whatever you have to do to keep growing. I'm trying not to cry. Um, whatever you have to do to keep growing, just keep doing it. And she has, and she's really strong. And I've gotten to see her twice. I saw her at six weeks and again at seven weeks and two days. And IVF, they do those ultrasounds early so that we can make sure that she's developing correctly, and she was. I heard her heartbeat at 10 weeks, and it was the sweetest, most amazing sound I've ever heard in my life. And, <laughs> fucking tears. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> so we got to hear her heartbeat.
which was awesome. Because we never got to hear our beats of our other babies. And it's something we had waited for, you know, for a long time, so. This is a very special time in our lives. For three years we've been trying to get to this point and it's really overwhelming that we're finally here. Hold on, <laughs> let me go get a damn. Okay, so I'm back. I got my shit together. <laughs> um, yeah, so, side note, you know, if you're going through this, just know that my heart goes out to you and I'm praying for you and you have all of my compassion and all of my empathy because this is a tough journey. I mean, not even to just have to go through it personally, but even outside influences, you know. God blessed me with a dear, dear friend who was also on this same journey. We were going through IVF at the same time. And I thank God for her because none of my other friends have to deal with this, you know? And while they're supportive, you know, and compassionate and amazing, and, you know, they, they go through it with you, but it's just different when you have someone in your life who knows exactly what you're going through and exactly what it feels like to have to do it this way. <laughs> and then you see so many people just have babies with no problem. You pop them out like that. They rub noses and they're pregnant and it just doesn't happen like that for everybody. And it can get to the point where sometimes non-deliberate <laughs> insensitivity can take place, you know, family and friends asking, when are you going to have a baby, or are y'all ever going to pop one out, or, you know, you're getting older, you should have one, <laughs> not knowing that you've been trying <laughs> to have them, and not knowing that they're asking you when you're going to, oh, I just saw a whale. I just saw a whale. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. They'll ask you those things not knowing that you just miscarried your baby yesterday and you're still currently miscarrying your child when they're asking you when you're going to have a child. <laughs> that happened to me. You just, you just have to suck it up because you don't want to be rude or make anyone feel bad. And that's why I'm making this video as well, you know, to just make you guys aware that you have to be careful inserting yourself into someone else's womb. You know, it, and I know you mean well when you ask those questions, but like I said, you don't know what's going on with someone. There's people who have been trying for 10 years, more. There's women who have had 10, 15 miscarriages. I've had three and one failed IVF transfer where my baby didn't stick to me. So I can't even imagine having way more than that and even coming to a point where you realize that you're not going to have a baby, not in your own body anyway, if at all, and having to research other avenues like surrogacy and adoption when all you want is your baby. 
your baby that you made with the person that you love. You know, but this video completely took a turn. <laughs> this is not what I expected to talk about, but I guess I'm just talking from the heart right now, and I hope you guys don't mind. But I think it's important that I open up to everybody about this. Because if you don't share your stories, then people won't know and changes won't be made. And, and that's tragic. I don't feel like any woman who has to resort to this journey to have a baby should also have to be quiet about it or suck up the things they hear from friends and family regarding their own womb. You know, it, it just adds to the stress and the pressure and the sadness and, and I, I don't think that's fair. It's not fair that I have to say we're working on it. <laughs> One day, when we've been through what we've been through. So if this can give another woman comfort and knowing that she's not the only one, even if you're in my circle and I don't know and you just haven't talked to anyone about it or opened up, you know, if, if I can just let you know that it's okay and you're not the only one and I know what you feel I know how you feel I know what you're going through it, your journey might be different and I might not understand exactly what you yourself are going through I I get it and if me opening up and talking about this can make someone who's not going through this journey catch themselves before they ask another woman about her childbearing journey, fertility journey, baby making plans. If it if that if you thinking about my video will stop you from doing that, then it was worth it. Because that means I just in opening my mouth saved another woman at least a, a second of heartbreak because I know my heart has broken a million times <laughs> when being asked those questions a million times so let's switch to a happy note. I'm pregnant. And that's another thing I want to talk about. Um, I spoke with, well, I, I chatted with a woman on one of the pregnancy apps that I am a part of. And she's also on an IVF journey. And she was at the point where she wanted to give up. You know, and, and I've been there. After my second embryo didn't work out, I took a six month break. I just didn't want to be poked at, prodded at. I didn't want to take no medicine. I didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to think about being pregnant. I didn't want to, I just needed time to just live. and not worry about what I have to do next and appointments and tests and all of that stuff. So I took a six month break, gave myself time to mourn my babies because I really didn't have any. I didn't have any because once, once you miscarry you have another cycle and then you jump right back in and that's not enough time that's not enough time to get over 
you'll never get over it, but to get to a place where you're okay and you don't cry about it all the time and get to a better place. So that's what I did for myself. I took a break for six months where I just lived my life. I enjoyed my husband and I drank. <laughs> I went out. I just did what I wanted and let myself be sad when I was sad and worked on my mindset and my positivity. And then I came back. I came back in October. At the end of September, I don't remember. End of September or October. And because I waited so long, took such a long break, I had to redo a few tests to make sure my womb was still good. And you know, I didn't have any ovarian cysts or fibroids. I did have a fibroid, but it wasn't anything serious. Um, my doctor said we could still proceed. So I began the medication and then our transfer was scheduled for November 7th, like I said before, and it did end up in a pregnancy. So I, while I was in a good place, I still had a little wall up, you know, because I, I, that wasn't my first rodeo with a positive, you know. I, I'd been pregnant before, and I, I feel bad that I stopped myself from being happy, not being happy. I stopped myself from getting too excited, you know, because I didn't know if it was going to end up the same way as my others, and I feel like I took some happiness away from myself in doing that. Time out. Sorry, housekeeping just came in, but, um, I did um, living in the past stole a little bit from my future, I think. You know? And I I didn't let myself get as happy as I probably should have when I found out I was pregnant again because I was scared. And I still sometimes am. I'm 16 and a half weeks now. And I, I know she's strong. My friend Nina gave me her fetal Doppler to use while I'm pregnant so I can listen to her whenever I want. And she's so sweet that every time I listen to her, she lets me. She lets me hear her. She moves around a lot, so sometimes it's a few seconds I get her, and then she moves and I have to find her again. <laughs> but, you know, that helps give me some peace of mind, especially between appointments. And, you know, while I wait to get my next chance to see her, because I haven't seen her since she was seven weeks and two days, I should be seeing her at my next appointment, which is at the end of this month. We'll be scheduling the next ultrasound because I'll be around 20 weeks and um, I get to see her again and I'm excited about that. When I last saw her she was just now starting to get like little nubs where her arms and legs were going to be. So I, has, I haven't seen her actually looking like an actual human child yet. So. We're excited to see her again. Um, but I, I think that 
now that we're this far and we're out of the first trimester sensitive period where things are more likely to happen, I, I've relaxed a whole lot more and now that I'm showing and I can see that she's growing, you know, I'm even more at peace with being pregnant and actually being able to be happy, fully happy about it and excited without that little fear in the back of my head. And uh, that's refreshing. It's a really cool experience. I'll never, you know, people tell you that, women tell you that all the time about what it is to be pregnant and what it's like, but until you really finally get to start experiencing it and seeing it, you never know. You won't know. You can imagine, but you won't know. Next milestone is me feeling her. I'm excited about that. And I'm just excited for the whole process period now. And it's nice that I can actually just breathe now. I don't have to take medicine every day anymore. I don't have to deal with hormones. <coughs> I'm not shelling out all this money <laughs> anymore. Hopefully I'll never have to do that again. Maybe I'll be one of those lucky women who after you have your IVF baby or whatever baby you get. <laughs> Adoption, foster, you know they always say you end up having one naturally after that. That would be cool to not have to go through the, that whole process again. Maybe God will bless me and let me experience that. And anyway, that's why I've been gone. My camera stopped recording and I don't know where I was when it did, but what I was saying is I'm happy. You know, for the most part, I'm a happy person and. I have, I'm happy with my life. I love my life. But sometimes life can beat you up. Life isn't parts of your life aren't always happy. And that's okay. Because those are the parts that make you grow. And those are the parts that you can talk to people about so that they might be able to learn something or they might find comfort knowing that someone else deals with the same thing they deal with. I can't say when I will be back on a regular YouTube schedule. I've got three videos in the wings. Um, we were in Naples at the end of January and that will be a vlog that I'll be releasing probably when I get back from Hawaii. I still have some editing to do. I didn't bring my computer because I didn't want to do any work while I was here. But um, I have that. I have this. Where have I been? Um, and I will also have the vlog of Hawaii being here. We've been here. We'll be here over a week. It will have been over a week when I leave here. So, And I've got so much footage so it's probably going to be like a two or three part vlog because I'm not going to subject you guys to an hour plus long <laughs> vlog because this will be an hour plus long probably even two hours long vlog so I'm probably going to break it up into three so what is that five videos right there and I have a couple other that I would uh, that I have on the agenda to film like I want to film a get to know me video um, not like your typical get to know me um, this this one will have deeper questions that will I guess really 
give you insight into me and my personality instead of just the main, you know, how old are you? When's your birthday? What's your favorite food? So these are questions that really require thoughtful answers. So I have that in the works planned. Uh, I definitely want to talk more about the IVF journey and fertility and things like that. I definitely want to talk more about my vegan journey and how I feel it's affected my fertility journey. You know, I dabbled in vegan cooking videos and stuff like that, but I'm, I don't think I want to do that anymore. <laughs> That's not where I want to take my channel. You know, I'll, I'll talk about veganism. I'll probably do more vegan chit chats because I get, especially lately, a lot of people on Facebook, you know, on my friends list have had things to say <laughs> about the vegan journey and it, it's funny because everybody says the same things but there's there's so much more to being a vegan than the food and most people don't get that some do some do get that but most don't if I do any more vegan videos that they will be down that line will I show you what I eat I'll show you what I eat if you want me to do some what I eat in the day type videos my meals aren't that they're mostly boring <laughs> unless I eat out or one day I'm feeling froggy and want to make something cool but maybe here and there I'll do a what I eat in a day video just to show you who knows I'm just I'm at a place I guess now where my mind is clearer. I've checked something off the list. <laughs> the biggest thing off the list that was kind of consuming me, I guess. So it's opening up my mind to more ideas and creative content for you guys. I've, I got a whole list of videos for you. Like it's just finding the time to film them. And I would have been filming them once I ended my first trimester, but. <laughs> right when I was ending my first trimester, I got the flu. That sucked <laughs> so bad, especially when you're pregnant and you can't take anything. <laughs> it was horrible. I still don't even have my voice back. It's been like a month now. And I know it was just that even that much worse because I'm pregnant. And when you're pregnant, your immune system is suppressed. So my body is working extra hard to try to get rid of all of the symptoms so and my throat was so bad I think that that's why my laryngitis has not healed yet why I still haven't fully gotten my actual voice back because my I, they have to be scarred my throat felt like fire and razor blades and the cough attached to that it, yeah, I don't wish it on anyone. Please stay away from people who are sick and wear masks until this flu epidemic is gone because it is no joke. I, have inf I had influenza A and it was very mean to me. I was in my room, stuck in my room, quarantined to my room for a week and a half. Even my, my husband wouldn't sleep in the room with me, which I don't blame him because it's, it can be spread by particles from your mouth and your breath. Like talking to someone can give them the flu. So he slept on the couch for a week until we were sure I was no longer uh, contagious. But yeah, so that took a whole nother month of my time away from my channel. Then we did another trip to Naples, which I talked about. I have a vlog about at the end of January and now we're in Hawaii at the beginning of February so it's, it's been busy it's been tough it's been happy it's been sad it's been miserable it's it's been an eventful December and start to the year let's just put it that way but I think I'm gonna end this video here I was gonna go to the pool but now I don't even know if I feel like it I'm in my bathing suit and my 
little sarong that Primerica gave me. We're here in Hawaii on a Primerica trip. We came, a, um, we came early. The trip started Friday, but we've been here since Monday. And we rented an Airbnb with some of our teammates who also won the contest with us. And now we're on the Primerica side of the trip. So they give us gifts every single day. And they gave Asley this cool Hawaiian shirt and I got this beautiful sarong. Last night we got a really cool um, beach towel and a beautiful beach bag. So I'm really looking forward to what we're gonna get today. And looking forward to enjoying the rest of this absolutely gorgeous day. So, it was nice talking to you guys. I haven't had a talking video in a long time. I think my last talking video was my updated armpit saga thing. <laughs> which funny enough, <coughs> which funny enough is my most popular video. I think it has over 5,000 views now. Which is huge for me because I usually don't get more than a, more than 150 or 200 and something is probably my next most views on my videos. So yeah, that's cool. Maybe this will get a lot. <laughs> Hopefully this year I up my subscriber count. I I'm up to over 150, which is huge for me only being on YouTube for a year. I know it takes a long time to get your subscribers up. But that video helped a lot. Uh, but yeah. Anywho guys, I'm gonna go now. Thanks for sticking with me through my story and my tears and my testimony. But I kinda like these heart to hearts. Do you like them? Let me know. Hit the like button if you like them. And then I'll do more of them. It's kind of cleansing. It's almost like therapy, and you guys are my therapist. And I'm talking about my feelings to you. <laughs> well, pearls. I hope you guys are having a lovely day. But until next time.